Uh, we're ready to connect with Madam Michelle Odose with that conversation on various issues affecting women. So here we go again. Madam Michelle Odose taking over our airwaves We're here with Nana Banamwa from GH1. So, ladies, today's agenda is brought to you by GN Life. Every life matters. Have you ever thought of the embarrassment and shame you are likely to experience when you lack the financial resources to give your loved ones a befitting burial? Mm. Do not let this happen to you. Make a wise decision today and avoid the embarrassment. Get GN Life Passage Plan now. With an amount as low as 20 Ghana cities, GN Life will help you with the financial resources you need to give your loved ones a befitting burial. You can contact GN Life on 030-3963-261 or 030-3964-782. They also have a website, www dot gnlifeassurance.com and they'll give you advice on the best plan for you. Remember, with GN Life, every life matters. And we also have um, the, the, women, the National Women's Summit and Expo for 2018, and this ties in very nicely with International Women's Day today. So all around the world, women are pressing for progress and they're achieving huge milestones. Ladies, it's time to gather once more at the Accra International Conference Center for the second National Women's Summit and Expo in celebration of International Women's Day under the theme, Press for Progress, Women Supporting Women. Fantastic. So for two days from the 9th to the 10th of March, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily, we'll be having discussions on our progress as professional, corporate, and business women. We'll also look at our personal image and branding, plus some motivation for our youth. So ladies, please come out in your numbers, let's network, let's interact with ourselves and with Women Trailblazers, and let's be inspired to achieve. Attendance is free, and for corporate and VIP packages, patients, this is for you. Call or WhatsApp 050-161-9314 or 277 you can also visit their website at www.womensworldgh.com to register. Please follow the National Women's Show on social media for further details. The second National Women's Summit and Expo, Inspired to Achieve, is brought to you by Charterhouse and supported by Joy FM, Access Women Initiative, Access W, Executive Women Network, Jandel Limited, and Business and Financial Times. So ladies, we hope you're listening and we look forward to seeing you there tomorrow and the day after. So ladies, coming back to our discussion, how can we make progress? There's some, um, the recent Afrobarometer round seven research report shows that 72% of Ghanaians agree or very strongly agree that women should have the same chance of being elected to political office as men. So I think the question is, how do we actualize this and make sure we get more women elected into public office? Because that may be a solution to some of the issues we are discussing. If we have more women elected into public office, they can see to ensuring that our young girls have access to sanitary facilities, um, whatever they need for their monthly period, so that they can stay in school. Because when you look at the stats, we start, the stats women, in fact, at the starting point, there are more girls than boys in school. But as they progress up the ladder, the numbers change, and you have um, women, more women dropping out, and it's because of issues like this, and more men staying in school. So we need some solutions. Let's start with Sarah. More women in elected office. It's very challenging to, to stand for election, whether you're a man or a woman. When you're a woman, it's doubly challenging. Even when you're counting. When you're <laughs> OK, we'll leave that one there. Um, First of all, how many men want a woman to, honestly want a woman to be in power? No, there Do was they research feel we did at NCC that showed that actually there was significant support from men to so have women. Significant, but is it the majority? Yes, it was. They the last one. Women MPs, women ministers. Yeah. It was that, surprising. I don't find that, to, <laughs> talking to people, I don't find that to be the case, but I'll rely on you. I have a friend who stood for office unsuccessfully, sadly, her challenge was raising campaign funding. She was told, you know, you're a woman, you won't be able to get enough money, why don't you step aside for the man? Over and over again. Um, even traveling up and down to your constituency, you have security issues, you know, 
you don't have the, I don't think you have the support network to push you as far as the men. And I think it's wrong, because I think women make better leaders in general. And uh, I think there should be more of us elected to office. Another thing is, I always joke that if I was ever elected, I wouldn't pass the vetting. Because the first time someone asked me during a vetting if I know how to cook or why I'm not married or something, it would be the moment I stand up and walk out of that vetting. <laughs> so those are the challenges as well. You could well. also sit there and educate them. Yeah. Sit there and educate it and not be passed, not be approved. Oh, they will approve you. They never or, if it's a rubber, <laughs> or if it's a rubber stamp, then let me go. It's a rubber stamp. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's very challenging to... to okay, so to we've identified for... the challenges. How, how do we get past this and get more women elected? Hmm. Nanaba looks like she has the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that it's very sad that we still have very low numbers in Parliament for women. Uh, there are countries on the continent that have made progress, like Rwanda. Rwanda has more women in Parliament than men, and it is celebrated across the world. And it, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful story. And I think that Ghana should be aiming for such. At least if we have 40% of members of parliament being women, it will be great. Now, how do we achieve that? It can only start when we give women the opportunity. Number one, as a media person, when I was hosting the morning show, early morning, you want a woman to come on a discussion program, either she's from NDC, NPP, from the University of Ghana, wherever she is. The first thing you hear is that, oh, in the morning, she needs to prepare breakfast. Do you think she will come? Let's call a man rather. And this could be coming from the production team. So number one, you have a production team that thinks that it is easier to fall on a man than a woman in the morning to come and air their views on national issues. So that mindset has got to change. You look across the media landscape, how many morning shows on radio, for instance, have a female presenter? It's all men. If you have a woman hosting the super morning show, for instance, she will likely bring in more women to come and discuss issues, put more women out there. I, I hear people say that, oh, we are trying to give positions, but we don't have the women. We have more women in this country than men. And of course, we have more competent women than competent men. So why aren't we finding uh, the women? The women are there. We are just not giving them the opportunity. And then there is the big issue of name calling. Once the woman puts herself up for election, the first thing, the first thing they will say is that she's sleeping with a man. Why won't they ever say that a man is sleeping with a woman? That a man got access to these it's funds for her campaign? Given right. Oh, I guess yeah. that the woman, a man got access to this amount of money for campaigning because he slept with a woman. You never hear that. Which is yeah. maybe the case. In, well, in, in fact, there are gigolos around. There are never no gigolos. A lot of the, the women will fund the campaigns. Yes. But the men, because, I mean, there's an account proverb that when a woman owns a gun, it leans against a man's wall. Exactly. So the women are hiding behind the scenes, yeah. funding yeah. this And the men, some men office. just don't want a woman who will sit on radio and be, uh, be, be very visible. assertive. They don't want a woman who is visible. They'll start calling you Marijata. Uh, they'll give you all sorts of names. And then once she's successful, you know, when she goes through it and she wins the seat, then they're looking for who she slept with in the party before she got a position because of as a course, minister. You can't have a uterus and have a brain at the same time. I guess. Yeah. And I have to go back to 2016. It happened to her at the EC that yes. she got the position because... I wasn't even running for office, mind you. Uh, yeah, you were not even <laughs> running for office. That she got the position of EC because she may have slept... I mean, how? How do we relegate... Mine the was not even one. It was yeah. such a big job no. with such a huge salary. Yeah. It needed yes, to be seriously. several. But, but I think... Now, let me just share my perspective. Now, but to your point, this is the kind of thing that scares many of us capable women from venturing into public women. service. Yes. We just can't stand the intensity and the ruthlessness of the public yeah. glare, you know. And some of the, you know, criticism is just unconstructive and yeah. meant to hurt rather than move forward. Yeah. And you were talking about Rwanda. Rwanda, their success story is they run the government as if it's like a private sector, yeah. very <laughs> focused on delivery. Yeah. And what we've been able to achieve and not pettiness and, you know, this woman has done that. So women can fit in 
more snugly if you like. Because if you, I mean, many of us are too sensitive to handle, you know, those things that don't but help people. I think people. that is precisely yeah. the issue that we are pressing for progress. Yeah. And even that theme tells you that you need to apply effort, you need yeah. to press. Yeah. The men are not going to give up their seats at the table willingly. They're not going to make space for you. They will not leave a seat for you. You need to bring your own chair and sit there. But the point is that we need to get past this. So they, are not, they, they won't stop the name calling. We can hope that the more men are engaged and the more they open their eyes to the possibilities and to the fact that women do bring um, progress to the nation, to their communities, to the businesses when they are allowed a seat at the table, the men would do better. And we probably at this point need to give a shout out to the men who get it and who are supportive. Oh, yes. The ones like my husband who's taking care of my daughter this morning so I can be here and gotten her ready for school and all that. So we need men who understand and who are supportive. But if we don't have that, then what? We as women, what can we do? And TB needs to go out and do her business, whether the men want her there or not in that space. What can we do? We need to toughen up. Yeah. But she's got to want to do it. So for example, to the point I made, if I had a choice between a private sector role and a, a public service, I won't choose All public of us. service. All of us. So what? <laughs> it has to be compelling. And right yes. now, it's not compelling for women. But as women, we need to get past that and also recognize that we have a responsibility yes. to contribute and a right yes. to contribute to nation building in yes. the public space. So